Growing up in a large family, I ate a ton of casseroles. They are the perfect meal if you are a busy mom who doesn't want to spend hours in the kitchen, yet you need to feed a crowd. So here are three of my favorite easy, delicious, and simple dump and go vegan casserole recipes. Let's start by making a white bean salsa verde casserole. We'll start by setting the oven to 375. While this is a dump and go recipe, because I use my better than bouillon for my veggie broth, I'm gonna actually need to mix this and heat it up together so that everything's well incorporated before I dump it in the casserole pan. So I'll add two cups water and two teaspoons of the veggie bouillon paste. And I'm always pretty generous with my teaspoons when it comes to this paste, just to bring in as much flavor as I can. We'll mix that together so it's nice and incorporated so that the casserole will have the flavor mixed evenly throughout. We also wanna incorporate the salsa, so you'll add one one cup of your salsa verde to the veggie broth. So even if you're not heating up the veggie broth because you don't need to mix it together like I did, you still wanna add the salsa to it first. Mix all of that together either in a bowl or over the stove and then add it to your casserole. Perfect. And that's ready to dump into the casserole. Now all we do is literally dump and go. <laughs> so we'll start with the two cans of white beans and they're rinsed and drained. I already rinsed and drained mine. We'll add them to our casserole dish. Now this is optional. If you do not like homini, then you can totally leave this out. This is just basically like a puffed corn. It's really yummy and adds a really yummy texture. So I rinsed and drain this can and we're adding that in. And then I'm also adding a cup of frozen corn. So this is a cup of frozen corn, still frozen. Adding that to the dish. Half of a diced red onion. This is where a lot of the flavor is gonna come from is these diced green chilies. And these diced green chilies usually come in about a four ounce can. So we want two of them. We want eight ounces of diced green chilies with the juices. And we'll add the spices. So we just have garlic, one teaspoon of garlic powder and two teaspoons of cumin. This will bring in a lot of that yummy cumin flavor. I like a lot of flavor. So you can always stick to one if you don't love cumin. Then we'll add one cup of brown rice. So if you're using white rice, you may need to use a little bit less liquid. So again, this is two cups of veggie broth with one cup salsa. So if you're using white rice, you may do about one and three fourths cup of veggie broth or just make it a little bit less. And remember, we do have some added liquid with the frozen corn too, kind of make up for, for that extra. And then you'll mix everything together really well so that it's all nice and evenly coated and incorporated. Now for the most important part, you'll take aluminum foil and make sure that the seal is really tight. We don't want any extra water escaping. We want to keep it all in there. Now we'll place it in the oven for about one hour. White rice, maybe closer to 45 minutes, but with brown rice, you need about an hour. All right, it has been an hour and our white bean and salsa verde casserole is done. So I'm gonna pull this right out of the oven and let's take a look. Whew. Yum, look at that. Now I'm gonna let this sit and let all of the flavors absorb. It looks like the brown rice needs a little bit more time than just an hour. So for whatever reason, it took a little longer for me. So maybe an hour and 15 minutes for that brown rice to completely cook. So I'm gonna actually put it right back in the oven and cook for another 15 minutes. It's almost there. It's just barely, barely. Okay, it's been an additional 15 minutes. And so the salsa verde casserole is done. Let's pull it out. Ooh, hot. Perfect, look at that perfection. Oh, this is awesome. This looks so good. And now we'll garnish with some cilantro and green onions. Beautiful. All right, let's scoop some up. We'll add some fresh tomatoes. You can also add favorite salsa. All right, let's try it. Mm. This is awesome. It's so good, so many flavors, super yummy. Remember, you can always do this with white rice and add a little bit less water and it will cook 30 minutes faster. So something to keep in mind. Next up is a Tuscan Orzo vegan casserole. We'll preheat the oven to 400 degrees for this one. Just like with the other casserole, because I'm using a bouillon paste, I need to first boil the water, which is two and a half cups of water, and then two and a half 
teaspoons of the veggie paste. And then we'll make sure that that's all mixed up and incorporated. I'm always a little more generous on that veggie bouillon paste because I like flavor. I'm also going to add the spices to this mixture because while I'm waiting for it to heat up, I might as well save that time. So we will add two teaspoons of garlic powder and two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. Perfect. Now we're ready to dump and go for everything else. We'll start by dumping in half of a chopped red onion that's nice and diced. Spread that evenly. Then we'll add 12 ounces of orzo. We want this at the bottom so the liquid will cover all of it. Then we'll add just a can of these black sliced ripe olives, just a little mini can. It's about half of a cup. And here's where a lot of the delicious flavor will come from. This is a eight ounces of chopped sun-dried tomatoes. I have a little bit of the oil coming through. It's not completely oil-free, but I know you can buy some. I just didn't have them at my grocery store. They all had oil in them. They add so much flavor they really make this dish. After that, we're gonna dump in our liquid. So just that veggie broth, about two and a half cups of veggie broth with our spices. Next, <laughs> we're gonna add half a block of tofu. Now I found these at my grocery store and I love it that they're split up into two. So you can just cut it in half and just use half of a block at once. We want this to be a complete meal. So we're gonna add in a protein source. And again, this could be white beans if you prefer or anything else, but I'm just gonna crumble this really finely. I want you to think of this like mozzarella cheese, how in any type of Italian dish you have some cheese chunks, it's gonna be kind of the same thing. And because the tofu doesn't have a ton of flavor, it's gonna absorb some of that veggie broth and we'll add a little bit of salt on top as well. So just crumble that in. You don't even have to drain it. Just try to crumble it the best you can. I'm gonna sprinkle about half of a teaspoon of salt on top just for that tofu. And then we're gonna put this directly into the oven without putting aluminum foil on it to let the tofu harden a little bit but everything cook underneath. 15 minutes at 400 degrees and then we'll check on it. While the casserole is cooking, we're gonna quickly throw together a vegan Parmesan cheese recipe. So you'll add one cup of almond flour. This is what gives it that Parmesan cheese texture and look is that almond flour. And then one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of salt, and then we'll finish it off to give it that cheesy flavor with one big heaping tablespoon of nutritional yeast. And we'll mix all of that together and this is how easy it is, that's it. This is your vegan Parmesan cheese. We'll sprinkle this on top of the casserole after we check on it and add our spinach. Okay, it has been 15 minutes, so we'll take out our orzo pasta casserole and it looks perfect. Okay, so now we just wanna mix everything in. You can see the pasta already is getting a little hard on the edges. So mix everything in. This is such a great casserole if you're afraid of tofu or other people are afraid of tofu. It's not that big of a deal. Just don't tell them that it's tofu. Let them believe it's cheese. <laughs> All right, now we'll add in a big handful of spinach. We're gonna take a little bit to wilt, so just give it a little bit of time and it will wilt in there. Once you've worked that spinach in, it takes a little bit, just a couple of minutes, and then it starts to wilt down and it's nice and incorporated. Now it's time to sprinkle some Parmesan cheese on top. So we'll just take our parm and just do a nice, beautiful layer. And we'll put this back in for an, about another 15 minutes. The pasta just needs a little bit more time. We're gonna cover it this time so that all the moisture stays in so it doesn't dry out. And then we'll spend the last five Five minutes with the aluminum foil off just to brown our Parmesan cheese a little bit. Now before I put the aluminum foil back on, I'm gonna add just the tiniest bit of water to the corners because I noticed earlier that the corners were kind of getting crunchy and hard and I don't want that to happen. So just the tiniest bit, not even like a fourth a cup of water. If you want, you can go all the way across. So now, if you feel like you have enough water in there already, you don't need to add that extra water. Now we'll put on the aluminum foil. Still kinda hot. Again, you want it nice and snug and we'll put it in for another 15 minutes. Okay, the orzo casserole is done, but I want to take off the aluminum foil and broil it just for about two to three minutes, keeping a close eye on it. So I'll broil on high just for a couple of minutes to brown up that Parmesan cheese. 
All right, it's been about five minutes. And honestly, it doesn't brown that much. So, you know, just a little bit. You can tell the difference, just a little bit. If you wanted to skip this stuff, you totally could. It just adds a nice little crunchy crust. Yum, this honestly tastes so much better than it looks. <laughs> I can't wait to dig into it. I am so excited about this one. This looks so yummy. Time to try the orzo pasta, the sun-dried tomatoes. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. If you love sun-dried tomatoes, you will love this casserole. It's honestly one of my favorite, and you would never know there's tofu in it. In the future, we'll probably put even more tofu in it. You can't taste it. It's yummy. You can't even tell with all this Parmesan cheese, and it adds more protein. I think this is like the best one. <laughs> this is so good. Yes, I'm sitting on the ground behind my couch to eat this right now. <laughs> I don't even want to get up. Hey, before I go on the next recipe, I just want to ask you real quick if you have signed up for your free one-week meal guide. It is vegan. It is plant-based. It is delicious and I change it out every single season so if you're watching this in the spring you'll get the spring meal guide if you're watching it in the summer it'll be the summer or in the fall or winter so make sure you sign up every time I forgot to mention if you like red pepper flakes which I love but my kids do not you could also add a sprinkle of red pepper flakes to this dish to add in an extra little kick next we're making a Thai red curry rice casserole just like with our other casseroles we'll start by making the sauce over the stove so I will first add in a a cup of water and one teaspoon of bouillon paste. Or you can just add one cup of veggie broth. You'll heat that up over the stove. Next, we will add the Thai red curry paste, and you want about three to four tablespoons of this red curry paste. Three and four. I like it with a little bit more flavor, so I always go towards the four tablespoons instead of three, but that's up to you. Make sure everything's mixed together really well. Then we add a full can of coconut milk. If you would rather do light coconut milk, you can do that. This is full fat. If you really want to go low fat, you could do just coconut milk from a box instead, but we're going to do the full fat version from a can for today's purposes. <laughs> Super creamy. You know, light coconut milk is really just watered down. Full fat coconut milk, so you could add a little bit more water and just use half the can to save a little bit of money. Next, we'll add two tablespoons of soy sauce. This is low sodium soy sauce. And then two tablespoons, I just have light brown sugar. You can also use coconut sugar is ideal here. I just ran out, so I don't have any coconut sugar. But two tablespoons of coconut sugar, and then about a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. So we're just gonna kind of eyeball that one. Just a pinch of salt. And then to finish this off, we'll add two cloves of minced garlic. I'm just gonna grab my minced garlic jar, two cloves, which is one teaspoon. Mix that in there, and then we're ready to dump and go. Actually, before we dump and go, let's set the oven to 400 degrees. All right, we are ready for our dump and go. So we have one cup of jasmine rice. This is white rice, so hopefully this will cook faster than our other one was with the brown rice. And then one can of rinsed and drained chickpeas. I have one red onion diced, a full red onion. We're gonna add lots of veggies to this. About one cup of chopped carrots. And then I have about one bell pepper, but I mixed it so that I have red and green. Half of a red, half of a green. And you can cut it however you prefer. Now I will be adding broccoli and basil later, halfway through the cooking process, but for now, we're just gonna cook it with this and then the sauce that we prepared earlier. So the sauce is nice and hot. I'm gonna dump it over. It smells so good too. And we'll just give it a little shimmy shimmy. Perfect. And then we'll cover this with a loop. Oil. We want it nice and tight so that there's nothing that escapes. We want all that moisture. And then we'll put it in our oven that's been preheated to 400 degrees. All right, now here's the funny story about my casserole dish. When I got married, my husband and I received about 10 of these Pyrex casserole dishes, which come in handy, but you don't need 10. So when I went to return a bunch of them, I was giving them this one in particular to the lady and she was had already scanned it, given me my money when I realized that someone had inscribed our last name on the dish, if you can see it right there. So I quickly was like, never mind, never mind, can I have that back? <laughs> and took it back. So I have since been using this dish since my wedding date, and I'm grateful that my name's inscribed in it and that someone else at Walmart didn't buy it. <laughs> it has been 30 minutes, now we'll add our broccoli and basil. We just want to more steam the broccoli so it doesn't get super soggy. And then we'll cook it for another 15 to 20 minutes. All right, it is done, so let's pull it out. Ooh, looks amazing, oh my goodness. All right, time to try it out. I'm super excited, this looks so yummy. 
Oh my goodness. This is awesome. This is so good. Mm. I may just make red curry like this from here on out. So easy, so delicious. My whole family will love this. It's not too spicy. It's really good. Casseroles for the win. If you like these easy dump and go vegan casserole recipes, I know you will love my other easy vegan recipes that you can go ahead and give a try. Check out these videos right here.